I know so many awesome men who want to support diversity and in particular women in tech, but sometimes they don't know where to start. Some of them feel like they don't know how to approach the topic and of course they're afraid of doing or saying something wrong. It's hard to navigate being an advocate or an ally, so I've decided to create this video specifically for those men. Diversity in tech is everyone's issue, because without it, we can't create truly innovative technology that solves problems. We also know that diversity brings countless benefits to organizations, improving, for example, financial growth, company performance, company culture, creativity, the product itself, customer satisfaction, and so on. I'll link some articles in the description if you'd like to learn more about this. We all know that there are a ton of super talented and super skilled women in tech out there. And at the end of the day, this isn't a competition. We're all on the same side. We all want to thrive at work and make a difference. And the most effective way to do that is to do it all together. However, there are systemic issues and biases that create barriers for women when entering and growing within the industries. These systems developed over time, representing the needs of the majority group, which is predominantly white men. But they are now subtly disadvantaging those employees who weren't taking into account when designing these systems, when designing this environment. Change requires everyone's input, and in fact, men are often in a better position to address and have an influence on these dynamics compared to most women because they're the majority demographic. Now that we've briefly discussed why it's important for men to be allies, let's talk about how they can do that. One of the ways to do that is to listen. Listen to women's stories and understand their experiences. Don't try to fix individual women, but Try to understand the barriers that they're facing and their environment. Practice your active listening skills and be open-minded. And to make sure that we're on the same page about this, active listening isn't about waiting for your turn to talk to express your opinion and your point of view, but it is actually actively listening. It's hearing and processing the information that you're getting from the other person. National Center of Women and Information Technology has created a very helpful critical listening guide that will warn you of certain traps and will help you find the language that will enable you to have a very meaningful conversation. Some of the things that will be very helpful to understand as a result of such conversations are what privilege is and finding a few examples of how you may have benefited from it in your life and career. Understanding this is an important step to becoming an ally. That gender inequality comes in different shapes and forms, and that the environment is still biased and what barriers women may face when trying to advance their careers in the industry. Step number two is educating yourself. If you're serious about supporting women in tech, do your research, read and educate yourself on the topic. There are plenty of resources out there that can help provide context, share stories, and direct you towards actionable steps. Another great way to get into women's shoes is to read literature written by women in the industry, women in tech. I list them great lists that I found in the description. Step number three is noticing and correcting unconscious biases. We all have biases. It's unavoidable. However, the question is, what are you going to do about your biases? Being aware and managing your own biases is an important step towards supporting equality. And in fact, not just gender equality, it goes far beyond that. I have a separate video talking about how we can manage our own biases, which I will leave a link to in the description. Recognizing biases and biased behavior and pointing it out in others is crucial here as well. And it might not be just the biases of individuals. They might also exist in the technology and the product that you're working on. Again, you can find some interesting resources in the description that will be a great starting point on educating yourself on how to recognize them. Advocating for changing the environment and company policies. I'm talking about unfair interview and hiring practices, biased job descriptions, performance evaluation, project distribution, 
flexible work policies and company culture in general. There can be many more things that I'm not thinking about and these policies are very specific to the company. So the best way to identify any problems in the environment is by talking to women who you're working with. If you recognize issues in your company, advocate for change. Obviously, just pointing out a problem isn't enough. The most productive thing to do is to come up with a solution that works for everyone. Work together with women on your team and ideally representatives of other minority groups as well to come up with different options. Men have the power of the majority to advocate for better and more inclusive systems. Women don't have that power, unfortunately. So we need to work together to make environments that are truly inclusive. However, be careful not to focus on any particular woman or her specific situation and her problem when advocating for change, as this may backfire and end up feeling patronizing even when well-intended. Yes, you may have examples of specific women facing issues or barriers in the organization. However, look at the bigger picture at a higher level and at the system that enables those barriers. I'm also leaving some resources in the description that will help you navigate this. Adapting a 50-50 mindset. Generally speaking, 50% of the world's population is male and 50% is female. So there should be equal opportunities for both parties. And this 50-50 mentality means thinking about equal representation in the workforce, equal treatment, equal recognition, equal access to opportunities, etc. Adopt this mentality and treat women as equal in that sense. See your company and its activities through that prism. Hire, pay and promote women. Speaking of equality and gender ratios, try to aim for equal representation, pay and promotion opportunities in your company's workforce. If you're in a position to influence hiring processes, make sure that they're free from biases and that they are fair. Search for talent on recruiting platforms that have a good pool of female candidates and do bias and interview training with team members who will be conducting the interviews. Ensure that women and men are getting paid equally and fairly based on their value and contribution to the company. Don't base salaries on the candidate's previous earnings because that may bring inequality to the table as the candidate's previous company could have had gender discrimination within the company culture or within the compensation structure and also promote pay transparency. Finally, help women get promoted, whether by giving them credit when they deserve it, or if you see a woman who deserves a promotion but is getting overlooked, diplomatically mention it to the people in power. And if you're in the position to promote, make sure that you're fair and aren't overlooking certain candidates due to biases. Mentor and sponsor women. Mentoring women is the best way to understand what they're going through and give back by helping them. Whether as a peer mentor or as a more senior advisor, mentoring is always an incredible way to give back and to grow together. Find a female mentee and try to keep the 50-50 gender ratio if you have more than one mentee. Sponsoring in career terms means advocating for someone and helping them get a certain role, job, etc. It's done all the time and there's a good chance that you've done it before or that you've been sponsored. Sponsor woman, again, adopting the 50-50 mentality. Initiate conversations about gender and diversity. Again, it's much easier for men to start those conversations as the majority demographic in tech, and it will reduce the barriers and the perceived risks for women to be heard on the topic. Don't be afraid to start these conversations with other men and people in power in your company on this topic. And again, don't forget, don't focus on specific examples of particular women, but instead go bigger and focus on the issues in the environment and systems. Recognize women. Give women credit, share their stories and celebrate their wins. It's incredibly powerful and motivating when your work and your contributions are being recognized. So try to do this regularly with your female colleagues. 
Obviously, make sure that it's not patronizing in any way. Consult with your female colleagues and friends if, uh, if you're in doubt on the best way to do that. Amplify women's voices and ideas. This point goes hand in hand with the previous one. Help women get heard in tech, within your company, at professional events, on social media, any platform where you can amplify their voices, do that. Follow female leaders. We get a ton of information by following other people and by following female leaders in tech, you will get a ton of insight onto their realities. You'll be able to relate and understand the context of their day-to-day, -day, their barriers and challenges, and that will make you a wonderful ally. Model alternative work-life strategies. As I've mentioned, the workplace, especially in the context of the tech industry, has been developed around the needs of the majority. The needs of women and other minority groups are rarely represented in the stereotypical work environments. One of those needs is for flexible work conditions that would support women's alternative work-life balance needs. A great way to support women in tech is to model those strategies and to take advantage of policies and benefits that are helping address them. This way, you will help equalize the perception of lifestyle and those benefits in particular. Some of the examples of what you can do and of the benefits that you can take advantage of are taking parental leave, adopting flexible work hours, working from home, and taking advantage of childcare benefits. And I'm sure that there are many more. Again, the best strategy here is to talk to the women around you to see what benefits they're using or which benefits they would like to remove the stigma around. Ask for feedback. Be humble and ask for feedback. Being an ally can be tricky and it takes courage. You need to get ready to be vulnerable, ask for second opinions and understand that you will probably make mistakes. But as long as you're brave enough to own your mistakes and correct them, not only will you be highly respected for that, but you will also grow personally and professionally. And finally, promote diversity beyond gender. This needs to be said. We need all types of diversity in tech. Diversity among the women on your team and other teammates. True diversity should go beyond gender, including race, sexual orientation, age, background, etc. Once you feel confident as an ally to women in tech, expand beyond that demographic and help promote all types of diversity in tech. I hope that this list of actionable steps will help you become a wonderful ally to women in tech. Again, there are plenty of resources in my description that will be great next steps. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to add anything to this list and please share any resources that you may have on the topic. Share this video with your male colleagues and friends who are allies and who would like to be more involved in promoting diversity in technology. Like this video if you've enjoyed it and of course subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. We can also be friends on other social media, you can find me as Coding Blonde. Have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.